Hi, I'm Sarah Geringer. Thank you for joining me today for a guided meditation on a portion of Psalm 35. Before we begin, we're going to take a deep breath in to invite the Holy Spirit into our experience. And as we exhale, we'll cast out anything standing in the way of us focusing on God's word. So let's breathe in and exhale. Okay, so Psalm 35 is interesting. It is, um, David is talking about his enemies for a great portion of this. And he's talking about how they're ganging up on him. And at the time of writing this Psalm, I think he feels very alone. And he's asking God to defend him. And he's almost feeling like God is silent. And, uh, He's just crying out to God for help. So the verse that I want us to focus on today and think about is uh, Psalm 35, 22, and I'm going to read it a few times from the New Living Translation. Oh Lord, you know all about this. Do not stay silent. Do not abandon me now, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, you know all about this. Do not stay silent. Do not abandon me now, O Lord. O Lord, you know all about this. Do not stay silent. Do not abandon me now, O Lord. So David is saying, he's acknowledging that God knows all the details about these people that are opposing him, that are joining together to uh, try to defeat him and uh, really you know he's complaining about them and God welcomes those honest prayers from us he wants us to just pour ourselves out in front of him and uh, earlier in the psalm like verse 17 uh, David says how long O Lord will you look on on and do nothing rescue me from their fierce attacks and then we skip down to our meditation verse for today. And he's saying, oh Lord, you know all about this. You know every detail. You know all the things that are going on. Do not stay silent and do not abandon me now, oh Lord. So you might not be facing a literal enemies in terms of like a gang of people or a whole family, whatever, um, opposing you right now. But have you ever thought about um, your spiritual war that you're facing? That um, there's an invisible spiritual war going on every day when Satan and all of his um, demon followers are trying to defeat you in whatever you're doing. So let's say, let's say for example, you have a problem with overeating. Okay, I've had that problem in the past. And let's say that you are trying to do better. But uh, there's a plate of cookies, or if you prefer, a uh, new bag of chips that's in the pantry or on the counter is calling your name. And this is what you're thinking. No, I'm not going to do it. But it sounds so good. Maybe I could just take one. It won't hurt. I'm not going to overdo it this time. And then you find yourself eating three or four or five or six cookies, or you're eating the whole bag of chips or half the bag of chips, just way more than you know that you should. And guess what happens after that? I am so stupid. I'll never get this right. I'm so fat, I'm so ugly, I'm so, such a failure, I'm never going to overcome this, why do I even try? So you've had several uh, enemies opposing you in that thought life pattern, and you could apply this to any situation that's a struggle for you. In this specific example, at first you're believing the lies that state, Satan is telling you 
that um, a little bit won't hurt. If this is your problem, you probably should not even be partaking in it at all. But you're getting caught in this spiral of thoughts. And then afterward, you're punishing yourself, getting down on yourself in defeat and discouragement for not doing what you really wanted to do. So your enemies can be these strongholds of temptation, of um, you know, uh, rationalization, of um, condemning yourself. So you go to these neural pathways time and time again. And basically, uh, you're defeating yourself and Satan doesn't even have to mess with you in it. But he's planted these seeds over and over again in your thought life as you repeat these behaviors to try to defeat you. So I'm suggesting that you use a verse like this in those times when your temptation is triggered, whatever area that is for you. Maybe it's not overeating, but it's something. All of us have kind of a characteristic sin that we go back to over and over again. And uh, some of us might have just given up and thought, this is just the way I am. I, I can't do anything about it. And that's a lie that Satan's telling you as well. Because if you're God's child, you are redeemed and you're set free from those um, temptations. But you have to do your part in overcoming them. So I suggest that a verse like this you can use in those moments. That's when you can say, oh, Lord, you know all about this. You know how long I've been struggling with this since I was a child. For most of us, that's true. You know all about this. You know about my internal struggles. You know about my temptations. You know about how many times I have chosen the wrong thing. But you also know the victory that you want me to choose, the victory you want me to have over it. You know all about this, Lord. You can claim that promise right in that moment when you're staring down that plate of cookies or bag of chips or whatever the thing is that tempts you. And then you can say, do not stay silent. Do not abandon me now, O Lord. Now, when David said this, when he wrote this, he, know, he knew that God isn't silent and he knows that God never abandons us. But by saying that, he's acknowledging that God has authority and that God can intervene anytime he wants to and that God has the victory. So he's not denying God's power. He's actually affirming it and calling on it and claiming that power and inviting God into the situation. He's saying, be, be near me. Speak to me. Speak over my situation. Give me some hope. Give me some encouragement. Help me. Rescue me. And we can do the same thing in our temptation areas. And so I pray that you would personally apply this verse in whatever struggle that you're facing and that it would help you overcome. It would help you take a different route. And if you start memorizing this verse by meditating on it again and again then you'll have a tool that's ready the next time you're tempted and you can overcome in this area and so I pray that with the Lord's help by basically speaking his word back to him that you would be able to overcome in this area so let me pray this for you. Lord, you know all about the troubles we face. You know our personal, private temptations. You know our weaknesses, and you know our strengths also, and you know the, the areas that you want us to overcome with your help. And I pray that we would claim your promises in the moment of our temptation, Lord, that you would not stay silent, you wouldn't abandon us, but that we would invite you into our struggles so that you can help us to overcome them in your power and your strength. And we, pr I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this encouraged you. 
Next time we'll look at a portion of Psalm 36 together. Bye-bye.